Although a healthy diet is not treatment, it is a crucial foundation for effective treatment. And in the field of nutritional epidemiology, diet is an exposure that can be associated with disease. And in the field of infertility and nutrition, poor nutrition, infertility, miscarriage are very linked. So how do we address it? What do we do about it? The reality is that there are two key takeaways from this video that if you implemented them straight away, you would dramatically improve not only your nutrition, your diet, your health in general, and of course your fertility and decrease the risk of miscarriage. There are some very specific things that are individual recommendations that of course are going to be needed that need to be taken into consideration but as a general rule what we really want to be doing here is we want to eat in the concept that i always talk about from field to plate that you can recognize the foods that you are eating as you would recognize them in the field you can recognize them on your plate so what do i mean about that let's give an example of corn Corn is a great example because it has been made into so many things that are unrecognizable these days. But uh, on the field, you can see a corn of cob. And if you were to take that and cook it, you know, there's minimal processing that happens with that. You put it on your plate, you can truly recognize what that food looks like on your plate and on the field. You then can go one step further, which is you know an extra step in processing where you you get that corn of co that co a cob of corn, and uh, and you cook it, and then you remove the kernels and you put that on your plate. You can still recognize it, even though there has been some minimal processing happening there. Then let's say you take those kernels and you blend them. Then you end up with cream corn. So that's a third step. Really for optimum fertility, what I recommend is that you consume foods that are one to three steps from field to plate as much as you possibly can. So that really you can still very easily recognize that food on your plate and you know what it is that you're eating. And there are many practical benefits to that, which we won't get into right now because this is a five minute segment after all. However, when we go away from that cream corn, let's say the next step is that that corn has been processed to a point where you've got polenta, you know, dry polenta. It's been processed quite substantially. You, can't, you can no longer recognize the food from field to plate. But you know that it's corn, you know, the, the label tells you that it's corn in the packet that you get it from. And that's where the problems begin. Whenever we have packaging and food labels, already we know that we are quite far away from field to plate, from the concept of recognizing the food on your plate as you would in the field. Then let's say we take that a step further, we have um, corn chips right? That is an unrecognizable form of corn. And in addition to that, there are lots of other additives, ingredients, com uh, chemicals, compounds that we don't really recognize, uh, recognize at all. So that food becomes completely unrecognizable from the field to the plate, not what we want. The second that we've got it in a package, in a package with a food label, we know that we pretty much need to avoid it. And that really goes across the full spectrum of different foods that you are able to access. The more that you can consume foods that are based on vegetables and good quality protein and that you can recognize, the better for your fertility overall. Okay, so automatically packaged foods really should be a last, last resort. And then of course, eating a rainbow. I like to talk about that because sometimes even I have thought, okay, well, I actually on the weekend, I was looking at this and, and, uh, and I searched, you know, blue and purple foods. And you'll see that there are a variety of different fruits and vegetables that fit into this category. So you want to eat a rainbow. And if I can remind you, you know, we're looking at red, orange, yellow, green, and purple and blue. So all of those food colors naturally occurring 
in your fruits and vegetables is essentially what you want to be having on your plate. If you are adding those two principles into a healthy quality diet, and of course, you know, from time to time you might deviate from that and you might, you know, have something that is, is not, that doesn't fit into that, um, into that, into those particular recommendations. But if you're doing the, the best that you can most of the time, and even if we look at, you know, like, I often talk about the, the concept of 10% for the soul. If we do that, if we look at that from a, from a perspective of a week and that we have 21 meals in the week, breakfast, lunch and dinner, seven days a week, if we're looking at 10% for the soul, in that situation we would be having up to about two meals in a week that don't fit this description. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you a little bit of a kind of a break, a mental break in terms of nutrition if that's what you need. But really, as best as possible, focusing on that 10% for the soul, field to plate, and eating a rainbow is going to be one of the best ways that you can already improve your diet by 80% and improve your chances of taking home a healthy baby. Hope that helps and until next time, bye for now.